So one piece of advice that I would highly recommend to everyone, both undergrad and grad, is try to publish as much as possible. The best would be to publish in academic papers. Um, every single school has actually a student journal. So if you can um, just take your school papers, whatever papers you are most proud of, and um, and entering that into publication journals that will really give you an edge. So, for example, I had published a paper on um, private banking secrecy laws and another one on food security. And that one published paper helped me enter. Um, I worked for the United Nations Environmental uh, an Environmental Unit of the UN, and it was that one paper that truly helped because you can convey your passion. Now, if you can't access publications or you think the editorial process is too long, it's too grueling, sometimes it takes several months, blog. Blog as much as possible. The best would be to blog within uh, units. Every single university has um, blog groups that really creates um, visibility. It shows that you, even though you're young and you're still learning, that still shows that you have a tangible interest and you have a tangible research interests. Even if your next step is not academic, all of the thought leaders in every single field, they are considered thought leaders because they're publishing opinion and blog pieces. It's very hard to generate traffic to your personal blog, so I do recommend publishing within um, university units. But having that out there means that people can Google your name, can find you, and I have found countless opportunities. Part of how I got into being a Y20 advisor was through uh, the work that I put out there and, and published out there. Um, the in-between undergrad and grad school, as I mentioned, I was working at the United Nations. I highly recommend to go and do, let's say, the scariest thing that you can um, in, in that post post undergrad life because it's the one time where you might be willing to travel anywhere in the world in my case I went to Germany which was not too scary but um, it was a completely new and different place and working within such a large organization it was my first time I had no prior concrete experience working with the UN understanding that institution how it worked it's invaluable. Even if you decide to not stay in that field forever, it's how I mentioned the private sector, it's it's invaluable to really know, first of all, how an organization thinks, because that's what's going to come up later on with um, with uh, other work experiences that, that you might have. And so um, I worked at the UN for uh, the year in between grad school. I always knew I wanted to apply for grad school, now, not everyone has that same career path and trajectory. Sometimes that in-between shows you that, actually, I don't want to go to grad school, I want to work a couple more years. So that varies so much. But I think for me, because I knew that uh, I already wanted to do that, having that practical work experience really helped me gear my graduate studies uh, towards something that I, uh, I knew I would want to specialize in. So, for example, in my case, even though I love the mission, I uh, truly enjoyed the unit, I would say that that was not exactly the best environment for me to flourish. I prefer more fast-paced projects and, and many different layers happening at the same time. And so I decided that in grad school, I would focus more on um, basically honing in the public-private sector partnership that I started to become more and more passionate about. Now, I am a, a non-typical constant career switcher in the sense that I, um, I went to grad school again for international relations, transatlantic relations, and um, my, my master's thesis helped me get the job right after grad school, which was working at the World Bank. So again, that publishing um, aspect is super important. Um, but now I uh, have, have my own startup and it's in the food industry. So it, this is completely different from every academic and every tangible experience I've had. But what those very diverse experiences in different sectors and going to every possible, when I mean every, I mean I would go to three or four conferences and talks a week throughout all six years of undergrad and grad school. 
that I went to. I think that multifaceted approach allows me to, um, in, in startups, it's, it's important and it's relevant because you got to learn to learn fast and absorb material fast and switch and change. And I think having many different experiences, if you're an engineer, go take an art class. Um, if you're an art student, maybe you can take, um, I know it sounds daunting, but statistics. Because being able to understand the mindset of another degree in another field, I think that's what was invaluable and that's what really helped me succeed um, in every next job and next step I took without having uh, a really large academic or practical career background. So in a startup, I, I joke that for every one thing that goes right, there are 12 things that go wrong. Um, I would say that currently one of our biggest roadblocks is that we have a physical product and um, the manufacturing challenges that come out with, with putting a physical product out there in the world. This can be food, this can be an object, this can be something you invented, it doesn't matter. But I would say that manufacturing is one of the most difficult um, aspects of, of my daily job right now. And the second part is also breaking into an industry that I knew nothing about. So again, I had no background in the food industry and having to learn from scratch um, is, is difficult, is quite difficult at times. Learning everything from food science to supply chain to how sales work with specific retail partners, it sometimes feels like I could scratch the six years of uh, schooling that I did and, and it's like starting from from afresh. So I would say that that is one of the reasons that I learned that often it takes ventures and companies up to three years to uh, learn an industry and to put out a new product out there. Um, so I would say those are the two biggest things right now. I was working at the World Bank and as Maria noticed I'm also G20 and Y20 special advisor and so I was traveling two weeks out of the month for over a year and a half and the compound stress and change of food etc I fainted from stomach pain. Happened once I live in the United States and I was sticking to the like kale diet and being very healthy in a traditional way and after a couple months I just couldn't keep it up because I it's just not enjoyable to live life with an extremely restrictive um, boundary. So I started eating, let's say, normally again, and then it happened a second time. When it happened a second time, I realized I needed to take this seriously. And um, the, the dietitian had prescribed, a, it's called the elimination diet. It's very common when they don't, uh, when the doctor doesn't know what happened exactly. So in this process, I started making sweets, and I have a huge sweet tooth. Uh, I started making sweets with dates as a base. I loved it, I ate so much of it. I made everything from dates bread to pancakes, brownies, etc. I brought them to my work, and I shared them with my former classmates at Georgetown, and I noticed that people with no dietary restraints really like the flavors. When they finished all of my foods, I'm professionals didn't have much time to cook I look online trying to buy things and I didn't find anything and so understanding that that was my aha moment that realizing those tastes and those flavors were actually appealed to a large market while at the same time nobody was was selling this product that's how um, I decided to launch uh, to, to make this jump basically it was a step-by-step -step process um, every time I invested a, a little bit of my personal savings to learn something to, and I would see if I would make that money back if the market was actually responding and if we actually did get clients and so the pivotal moment when I realized that this was um, this was something real and that people really liked is when we arrived to the point where uh, demand was higher than the production level that we could keep up with and um, that was my second aha moment that okay not only do people like this but this is so real and this has a really large potential market so I would say that was kind of how, how my switch happened.